Today on Glove Affairs, let's talk about the Marcus of Queensberry rules. One of my favorite topics is to fantasize if you had the power to change the rules, what would you change? Yes. This here is like, it's funny because I don't know how many fans out there would like concur on this, but most of the time with me and my buddies, I'm having my little boxing debates with my peers and we sit in and we ask ourselves like, if you had the legislative powers, that you could actually like, if they gave out a popular vote and you could change some type of rules in the sport, what would they be? For all the things that we bitch about all the time, the, I mean, the catch weights, the same day weigh-ins, the sanctioning bodies, all this type of stuff, my very first one would probably be the criteria of the round scoring. Would be the idea. Now, for those who aren't familiar, the four main principles, the four criteria of round scoring are clean punching, effective aggression, range generalship, and defense. In my honest and humble opinion, this idea has never made sense. It clashes all the time, and it's one re major reason for a lot of the fucked up scorecards we see. I don't necessarily think it's always a matter of corruption or like officials or uh, uh, judges being bought. Sometimes it's just mere incompetence because this rule system does not go together. Let's go over these four, for instance. Clean punching obviously makes sense. Clean punching is obviously valid, it's tangible, it's something we can see as far as who's doing damage and not. But if you have effective aggression, why would you have clean punching and have effective aggression? Would that suggest that we're giving points for both clean punching and ineffective punch? Clean punching and, and punching that wasn't clean? Are we scoring points for both? That makes no sense. And you look at that from any other sports logic. Like in basketball, they don't put points on the board every time you hit the rim. If the shot didn't go in, you still got zero on the board. I don't care how many attempts you took. So that's one like little fallacy right there. Clean punching and effective aggression like don't need to be said in the same subset. That implies that both the effective aggression and the ineffective aggression will both be scored in the same subset. Then we go over to defense. And people forget defense is one of the criteria that I agree with. However, this, out, this offsets the idea of effective aggression or range generalship. This is what I'm saying. If a... Uh, uh, if we're going to score points for the aggressive fighter or the aggressor who's coming forward, if those punches aren't being effective, if they aren't clean punching, and if he isn't landing accurately and everything, doesn't punches go over to the defense as well? So do we score points for the defender, for the guy who deed the shots up, or do we score points for the guy who threw them, even though they didn't land? You know what I'm saying? It leads to murky water. And that's where we get people who say, well, you know, he won this round because he was more active and he was, I mean, he was more active and he was the busier fighter or he was initiating the fight. That's not scoring punches. That's not, that doesn't tally up and everything if they're not actually landing and they can't be like counted as points on the scoreboard. Then you have brain generalship. Brain generalship is probably the one that I disagree with the most. And because I understand it in theory of what it's supposed to be, however, it's ultimately the most subjective one to ever try to like, there's no way to determine it. For instance, you'll say, well, whoever part of the rule states that whatever fighter is asserting his game plan, forcing the other fighter to fight his fight more than he, more than the reverse, more than he's forcing him to fight his fight. Who's to say that? You're not in the fighter's head. You don't know his game plan. And then because of the whole idea of effective aggression and who's being forward and the role is being prone to try to favor aggressor, then you get situations where you have a boxer or a counter puncher who's in his mind doing what he wanted to do in the fight. He's allowing the brawler, he's allowing the aggressor to come forward, he's tagging him and he's landing his clean shots, but because the brawler is coming forward and because he's being more aggressive, he gets the points for, for uh, carrying the rounds. So it's like who, uh, so you know, in my honest and humble opinion, Clean punching and defense are the only two tangible structures that we should really focus on. That's the only two that have a realistic basis. That's the only two we can actually see and visibly uh, measure. Rain journalship, you're not in the fighter's head to say that because he's coming forward, he's dictating the fight. Maybe the counter, maybe he wants him to come forward or vice versa and everything. The one thing that we can see, you have fighters that are more well-rounded. Because the fight is on the inside doesn't mean that the doesn't mean that the inside fighter or the guy with the reputation for fighting inside is necessarily winning. You know what I'm saying? You get Tavares Cloud had Bernard Hopkins on the ropes half the fight. He surely didn't win it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, so it's like Mayweather in Hatton, and you know you get a lot of situations. So you can't dict you can't determine a fight by whose style and everything. I think like the criteria get shifted a lot. If I was gonna like make one rule change right off the bat, it would be to try to confine this rule to something that was more agreeable to everybody. This rule would have something where it was like more 
around the guidelines of clean punching, around the guidelines of defense, around the guidelines of the things that we can actually like measure and see. Not, you know, because I never understood the effective aggression aspect. It's, that's too vague and everything, because to me, if it's not clean, it's not effective. So it's not a need for having clean and effective. Another rule that I would change now that we're asking would be the rule about, as far as round scoring, we usually have three judges sitting at different angles at different vantage points of the ring. And this can also lead to three different judges seeing three different views and three different interpretations. Largely, then you add all the crowd noise, the commentary, the often biased commentary of the networks, whatever agenda that they may be pushing at the time. You get that on top of that. The crowd noise, anytime a fighter lets his hands go or whoever they're cheering for. So then everybody's prone to think, oh, he must be winning the fight or he must be dictating. They're going crazy and he's letting his hands go. And a lot of that can like suck the emotion. If I was going to change something on that level, me personally, I would put the judges like in a soundproof room somewhere in the arena, have it all acoustic out in a soundproof room. They would be watching the fight on mute where they couldn't be swayed by commentary. They couldn't be swayed. I mean, uh, they, I mean, they couldn't be swayed by the bias of the crowd and hearing the crowd noise and stuff like that. They would all be sitting there and they'd be watching the fights from the same angles or they'd have all three different angles that they usually have at the round on three different monitors for all three judges and let them submit their scorecards up to the crowd at the end. I think that we at least have a better chance of having more objective viewpoints and making sure that the judges are on an equal playing field and not being distracted by external influences. Beyond that, I think that like, I would also make use of the instant replay. I would also make use of the instant replay. This is they doing football and you can go back and review the call and every year they might up a couple of the rules and everything. And now we got uh, passing interference is reviewable. If a knockdown gets scored and it turns out it was a slip, well, we have an opportunity while well, both fighters in their corners to go back and replay this during the rounds and everything and assert that was in fact a knockdown. This can be a very fight changing uh, moment right now. You know what I'm saying? So these are some of the things that I think that the sport could probably work on. Y'all tell me what y'all think.